Good morning, traders. John Caruso coming to you here for the morning of September 22nd with your currency outlook for today. But first, we'll take a peek back at Wednesday's FOMC announcement. Um, we did see the mother of doves, Janet Yellen, actually lean slightly hawkish, uh, placing a, uh, a possible December rate hike back on the table. We saw the uh, uh, the Fed watch tool move from a 55% chance for a December rate hike just before the meeting uh, to the next morning following the meeting up, up, up over 70%. So now there's a, about a 70.5% chance they raise interest rates in December. This is all on the heels of the hawkish data that we saw and the growth accelerating data that we saw out of the United States in August. So. Uh, we also did see Janet Yellen revise GDP higher as well, the 2.4%, all the while um, admitting that they're still having a problem with inflation and meeting their 2% mandate. Uh, they actually came out and admitted that they're not, not quite sure what the forces are that's holding back inflation from hitting their 2% target. So, uh, very interesting to see um, them revise growth higher, but also say they're still having a problem with inflation. Um, we also, looking forward next year, uh, they're forecasting three interest rate hikes for 2018. 2019, they're forecasting two interest rate hikes, and then 2020, they're looking at one interest rate hike, um, which I think is absurd to be able to forecast that far out, but um, that's what we're running with at the, at the moment. Um, they also mentioned that they're going to be unwinding the balance sheet. We've got a $4.5 trillion balance sheet right now that the Fed's been carrying for the last uh, six, seven years since the beginning of the QE. They're going to begin to unwind that starting next month. Um, and they're going to try to do that about a 600, uh, I believe a $600 billion per year clip. They're going to try to unwind that $4.5 trillion balance sheet. So how, how did the market react after the meeting? Um, with Janet Yellen leading slightly, slightly hawkish on December, revising growth higher. Uh, we did see a big rip in the U.S. dollar. We saw a nearly 100-point uh, push higher in the USD to 92.49, I believe was the high. Uh, however, today we're back trading uh, right around that 92 area. So the market dropped back about 50 points um, since that meeting. So what's going on in the market? You know, that's, those are questions that we're trying to ask ourselves right now. Right now, you've got growth accelerating here in the United States. We also have a potential bottom in interest rates. If you notice the 10-year yield, we went from 2.02% right around the time Irma was making its way up through the Caribbean. Uh, we hit 2.02% to f after the Fed, we hit 2.29%. So in about a week's time, week and a half time, we saw a 27 basis point move in the 10 year, which is a very, very big move uh, in that uh, amount of time. So um, these are the questions that we're kind of asking ourselves right now, trying to figure out what the next big move in the US dollar is going to be. Is it gonna be back to the downside or back to the upside? Um, inversely, looking at the Euro currency, 119.17 and a half, that was um, following the announcement. Uh, we saw a big plunge in the Euro. Uh, however, this morning we're back. We're coming back in around 12020. So the market's back up there. I don't know if we're in a topping process in the euro currency or what's going on there. But again, we're trying to nail that next big move in the euro. Uh, we did hear from Mario Draghi this morning uh, mentioned that the eurozone is still having problems meeting their inflation mandates as well. So um, that could be a, a catalyst that provides a near term top in the euro as well. So we're still uh, what just kind of waiting and watching for specific uh, uh, support levels to be taken out in the euro. Um, but still, I mean, if you look at the chart right now, I mean, we're straight up since about May. So uh, the, uh, the trend is still very, very bullish. I think until we close back below 118.80 is the target. Could we see that uh, being a, a, a near-term tipping point for the euro currency? So I know that's a trade a lot of people have been struggling with. Um, the yen um, seems to have been front-running the F FOMC announcement. Um, we did uh, see it peak uh, about a week prior at 93.15 and we're dropped all the way back to 89.56. I still think we could see some more near-term downside in the end before uh, a potential bottom is placed in. Um, real quick, I'm going to touch on the, uh, the Canadian as well because we did see uh, Canadian retail sales and Canadian C CPI come out this morning. Retail sales uh, headline beat 
0.4% uh, versus a 0.2%. We did see a nice move in, uh, higher in the Canadian. However, we're about 30, 40 points off the high right now with CPI, headline CPI missed. So uh, the Canadian uh, still struggling versus the US dollar. We still might see a little more downside here in the near term. So uh, once again, I'm John Caruso. Feel free to uh, reach out to me at the desk if you have any more questions. Thanks a lot.